Hey, this is Hybrid here. This video is going to be a quick walkthrough for a mapping which I've made for Tractor Scratch Pro in combination with the Allen & Heath Zone 4D. Reason why I'm making this video is that I personally think it's quite difficult to get to know MIDI mapping just by looking at the layout in PDF or whatever. So hopefully after seeing this video you can get started with it straight away. Um, in general you can use it to control two track decks four track decks or three track decks and one remix deck. That remix deck has to be on deck D because it didn't program it for any other um, deck. Here we go. So the first thing you need to do is set the 4D to MIDI channel one. Press both of the encoders simultaneously. Um, then rotating the left encoder, you can set the, uh, the channel and when no LED is burning, yes, then you are on channel one. Press the encoder to confirm. Now you can set it to uh, Ableton or tractor mode with these two buttons. This is Ableton, this is tractor, so that's okay. Uh, this one needs to be on, not this one. This one makes uh, all the light pipes light up always, so you won't get any LED feedback. And now press the encoder to confirm. To load up the TSI, go to Preferences, select Controller Manager, click Add, select Import TSI, Import Other, then navigate to the location where the TSI folder is, select it and click Open. Now make sure your in and out ports are set to the Zone 4D and you're good to go. Starting with the encoder on the right. When I press it, I activate a shift function and it is used for various functions inside this mapping, so keep that in mind. Um, oops. When I rotate it, I can scroll through playlists. With the left encoder, I can scroll through my maps. And when I press it, I enter or exit browser mode. These buttons, the right one is play. Um, the second one uh, is used to trigger cue points set on the fly. So when I press this encoder, I can trigger it by pressing this button. This is the sync on off. And this button uh, makes you set your controls for deck number C. These are exactly the same. All right, so um, visual feedback. When I press the shift button, um, you can see that this LED is burning and which means that effect 1 and 3 are turned on. When I press it, they are turned off. Uh, this button is for setting the uh, key lock on, key lock off. And this button makes you set the uh, deck to master deck. So when I press it, you can see it shifting from deck A to deck C. Now deck C is the master deck. Okay, moving on to the jog wheel. Uh, when a track is playing, you can uh, slow it down or nudge it up by turning the jog wheel clockwise or anti-clockwise. If a track is paused, you can move the playhead simply by turning it. And you can quickly scroll through a track by pressing the shift button and turning the jog wheel. Loading up a track is simply done by pressing north or south. So select your track. If I press north, the track is being loaded to deck A. And if I press south, the track is loaded in deck number C. And it's the same on the other side for deck B and deck D. Um, when I press uh, east, I can uh, fold, fold or unfold my maps like this. Moving on to the um, right jog wheel. If I press west, the quantize is turned on or off. If I press shift west, the snapping is turned on or off. Uh, if I press east, I can scroll through my layouts. Layouts can be set um, in the preference. 
So when I press it, you can see it uh, moving from uh, layout to layout. If I press shift east, I start or stop my recording, but now it's recording, so I won't press it. So those were the jog wheels. Okay, moving on to these two rows. These are the cue points. Uh, they are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, I can set my cue points if it's explain, for example, um, just by pressing it. Uh, so this is going to be uh, number four. This is going to be number five. Um, I can simply delete them by um, pressing shift and the cue point you want to delete. So I deleted cue point number five, delete cue point number four. Encoders on top. Um, pressing the first encoder will make you set your loop in point. Pressing the second encoder will make you set your loop out point. And if you want to fine tune your loop in and out point, you can do so by simply rotating the encoder, which is really nice. Very useful when you're playing music which isn't really tightly on the grid. If you want to exit your loop, simply press the first or the second encoder. All right, the third encoder, when you rotate it, you set two different values. First one is the loop length, second one is the beat jump length. Um, so if you want to make a 2-beat or a 4-beat loop, set it to 4 and press the encoder. Uh, deactivate the loop by pressing it again. All right, so now uh, you can also set the beat jump length, like I said, and if you want to make a, a beat jump of, for example, eight beats, set it to eight and rotate the encoder. All right, those were the encoders. Okay, now on to these uh, faders. These are the tempo faders. This first fader is deck C, second one is deck A, this one is deck B, this one is deck D. To make it easy for myself to remember, I make them correspond with the uh, volume faders. So the first fader on the left is the volume fader on the left. Second one, uh, deck A, is uh, the second uh, volume fader as this, and it's the same for deck B and D. Uh, a cool feature. Um, you can set the tempo range quite easy if you press the shift button and the one the push encoder on the right you set it to two percent um let's demonstrate it so that's two percent if you press the third encoder it goes up to uh sorry yeah it goes up to eight percent the second coder encoder is 16 percent and the first encoder sets it all the way up to 100%. Um, that's quite cool because you can make um, some sort of turntable like uh, a stops. Like. Alright, one thing I almost forgot is that you can uh, also see the tempo range quite easy. If you open up the preferences, um, and you press the, uh, the various push encoders, you can see what uh, tempo range you are setting at that moment. So that's the way to, uh, to check it. On to the effects section. Um, that's this row, this row, in combination with some of these buttons. Uh, this section is the changing constantly. Uh, some effects I use quite a lot, some not so much, but I'm going to walk you through it so you kind of know wh what's happening. The two most trickiest ones uh, I will start with, that is this encoder and this button. If you're playing a track, you can activate, uh, no, no, you can set the effect by turning this knob. And if you uh, press the button, you activate the effect. So. All right, um, this one and this one is the other way around. So you um, set the effect by pressing it and when opening the encoder, you 
activate the effect. So if you open it up, it gives you a freeze, freeze, freezy effect. Um, okay, then we got this one. This is a kind of a reverse crane thing. This is the famous build whoosh fade. And then you can start in another track if you want. Um, what is this? Oh yeah, this is a good kind of a, a subtle way to mix out the track and mixing in another track. Uh, note that is that you are lowering the uh, the EQ, the lowest EQ as well. So you can use that as a different way of mixing out this active track. Um, yeah, that's not so. <laughs> that's not really interesting. You can check this one if you want. Oh yeah, this one is the wormhole. And uh, these two buttons uh, activate a um, beat slicer. Oh yeah, and if you open up this encoder, you uh, get a turntable kind of effect. I'll show it. I will rewind it, play it. So if you open up the encoder, All right, if you want to use the remix decks, um, go to deck D, select remix deck. Uh, then you can load up a remix deck by pressing south. If you want to trigger the clips, just simply use these two rows. Um, let's start. All right. Um, you can uh, select the next row by these two buttons, by pressing these two. And if you want to mute a slot, you can press the uh, shift button and this represents slot one, slot three, slot two, and slot four. All right, so well, um, we've come to the end of this um, MIDI map tour. Um, maybe you can use it, maybe you can um, get inspiration from it, I hope so. Uh, let me know what you think of it. For now, take care, bye bye.